we are flowing again wood stove back in operation <laughs> if you saw my big mistake on uh that uh, i think it was on the last video the ice was a little you know crappy but um because when you get ice and you live amongst the pine trees of course i got a lot of hard oak as well but then you get stuff like this taking place and if you don't know anything about pine trees of course i don't i'm not no expert by any means but i have what you would refer to as a short leaf pine here in the ozarks and they sort of um i don't know if this would be proper the limbs will die off and they go through what is called a uh, a self pruning process and so as they grow and these things grow somewhere between 100 to 120 feet tall then uh, they will drop their limbs and cause damage sometimes okay but this uh this little video here um i had thought well i'm gonna just make it private video for my good buddy good old army buddy brian there uh if you folks don't know anything about being in the military for any length of time and this may be true for some uh, police forces law enforcement maybe the firemen do it too but i can tell you after almost 23 years of service that it's definitely true in the military you can't live in a glass house you can't have thin skin well maybe that's not so true once uh, we had commanders like clinton and obama in office maybe you were allowed to have a little bit thinner skin because you could pull things out like stress cards <laughs> if you don't know what a stress card is um how would i describe that uh, nicely um it's kind of like a grown man or woman being able to self-inflict an adult time out anyway i'm getting off subject here this is in reference to a last video that i put out concerning uh me pointing out to a couple that they were spending probably somewhere along the lines of about four to five hundred dollars for chainsaw chain to get the same amount of work or labor out of a single design and engineered thirty dollar thirty dollar chain would provide well in that video brian was uh quick to give me a call and point out you know and razz me a little bit say well i because of editing the the saw was out of a picture and then the a, a next scene you saw me cutting some cedar a couple cuts so he thought maybe i just switched the chain you know and <laughs> he should know me better than that i have more integrity than that but he's just giving me a hard time so okay but he's got a point and the next thing he pointed out was the fact that I, if it was the, in fact that same chain, that I took it and put it on some soft cedar. Point taken, uh, but I will say this. Even if it is just cutting cedar and soft wood, I'm still getting work and labor out of that chain that most people would have thrown away a long time ago. So that's what I got to say about that. But the... We're going to go back here and we are going to um, take that chain. I did put a quick sharpening on it. I did take the rakes down a little bit. Um, I will say that it is the last sharpening that I'm going to get on that chain. I've actually taken it uh, a little bit beyond the wear mark um, that you'll see on the top plate cutters of those chain chains that you buy on most of them, I think. So I got some downed white oak. And it's been down for not quite a year. I'm going to say about nine or ten months. And uh, there is a, I think it's post oak or black oak. I get them mixed up. We're going to cut on that a little bit and do some de lemon. And hopefully I don't have to eat no crow. And if I don't eat crow, and if you're watching this, folks, I, uh, I want to encourage you to leave a comment for Brian. <laughs> that I once again prove my point that you don't have to throw chain away until you get uh, all the life that you can out of that chain safely. I will say if you're going to go cutting firewood for any uh, length of time, especially if you're away from the shop or, or your, your home or anything, 
don't take a chain like this what i'm about to show you as as the only chain that you take with you because the minute you hit a, a fence staple or a nail or nose it into the ground with some rock you're not gonna have uh any material left to work with <laughs> to resharpen so you should already be taking backup chain with you anyway when you go cutting firewood uh, if you're away from your own property or, or, or any uh, distance away from uh, access to another chain. So I just do want to point that out. So Brian, this is for you and the rest of you folks, if you want to watch and uh, continue to watch, but if you do, make sure you say hello to Brian and, uh, and razz him back a little bit. So let's go do that and let's go pick up on this white oak and see what happens. All right, I'm gonna try to explain this real quick. Let me see if I can, I wanna make sure I get this zoomed in here. All right, try to focus. All right, what I'm going to do here, this is a cutter. The saw, the saw is pointing toward my thumb or that direction, okay? So we're looking, if you're aft looking forward, holding the saw, this is a left-hand cutter. I'm going to use my little <laughs> tooth floss here <laughs> in representation of that cutting edge, which is right on the forward leading edge of this cutter. And this string, this floss, is going to represent the sharpening. So if you take this string and you sharpen, 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 you might see the little indicator in there. Once you get to that upper right-hand corner, okay, right here, okay, once you sharpen down to that corner there, if you go and take that corner out and you start going past it, you have rendered the chain ineffective. So the answer is, once you get to that corner, that's it. That's how far you got to go. So let me show this real quick. All right, here's a cutter. Let me pull this up. So new cutter, old cutter. Let's get to cutting. And I gotta keep this thing. <sighs> I'm I'm having to do this over again folks because I was a dummy and I did not make sure that this phone here was recording. So where's the NSA when you need them, right? <laughs> All right, let me back up here and we're going to see what happens here. Focus. All right, camera is saying it's recording or this phone rather. Let's see what we can do. Folks, you're going to be the judge. If I don't have to eat crow, leave a comment and give Brian hell below. I know on this 18 inch bar, I'm going through 15 inches of wood. And uh, I don't know what this dry white oak, the width of it is. I didn't bring a tape measure in here, but uh, you see my claw? It's gonna be pretty much maxed out here. So hard enough, big enough for this little saw. Let's see what happens here. And I hope I'm not eating crow.
shavings there. I could have taken them rakes down a little bit more. I thought it was going to be more aggressive than that. All right. Something like this. I would normally have my John's Red. A little bit bigger sorrel. 20 inch bar. It was a little tough on this little 250. I may not want to take this saw. <laughs> I normally don't on something like uh, white oak here, especially dry white oak with this little thing, but it did the job. So all I can say, Brian, is ah, 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 chain alive, chain alive, ah, 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 chain alive. <laughs> so how long will a chainsaw chain last? How many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll Tootsie Pop? Ultimately, it comes down to that inboard back corner of the top plate cutter. That's as far as you can go. Once you reach that corner, it's pretty much game over. And how quick you get to that corner is going to be dictated by your practices, your cutting, how you use your saw, whether you're hitting nails and staples and, and nosing your saw into the ground, hitting rock, which is going to relate to how often you're going to have to sharpen that chain and how aggressively you're going to have to sharpen it. These loggers and these guys that are running saws, these big powerhouses with these full skip chains and stuff like that, they have a whole different mindset and approach when it comes to sharpening their chain and how they utilize it. Um, they're, they're aggressive because they got to keep that saw running because that saw running means money to them. So they have a little bit different mindset when it comes to sharpening. So take that into consideration. Place yourself in the shoes of the person that you're taking advice from when it comes to sharpening your saw. Some of them, they're so aggressive on them chains, when they get done with their first sharpening, they're already taking half the life out of that chain. And it doesn't seem like the, uh, the cutter is, is that bad off or damaged. They just go at it. I mean, 10, 12, 15 strokes on, a, on one single cutter every time they sharpen. Very aggressively. You don't have to do that. You can get a lot of life out of your chain. Keep it out of the dirt. Keep it out of the rock. And hopefully you're not going to hit nails and staples. And that's going to dictate how much life you get out of that chain. And how long that chain is going to last. Let's see if I get any functionality out of it. Out of this uh, chain here. And some smaller stuff and D-Lemon. chain you say is no good I bet it does better than your handsaw till I run out of fuel of course but nonetheless the point is once again I'm getting a lot of work out of that chain about 90% of people would throw away have a good day folks may all your branches become full of fruit and I hope to see you next time Whoa.